Chapter 9 is more about correlation. Some facts about correlation. R is a pure number. That's what we call it when it has no units. Also, our correlation R does not change if you switch your X and Y. So you switch which variable is your independent, which one is your dependent. If you add the same number to each X value, if you add the same number to each Y value, or if you multiply each X value by a positive number, or multiply each Y value by a positive number. So for example, 64, here's a scatter plot for the minimum and maximum temperatures in New York for each day in June 2005. So for every day we did the minimum and maximum temperatures, we graphed the minimum along the x-axis, the maximum along the y-axis. Notice that when we switch the x and y values that the correlation doesn't change. So here we have the minimum for the x and then in our next plot we now have the maximum for the x values and minimum for the y values. So what my plot looks a fair amount different, but if you were to actually just draw the cloud, notice that the points seem to be clustered about the same and the correlation is exactly the same even though we switched the x and y values. In our next example we have a scatter plot of the maximum temperatures for each day in New York and Boston. Notice now we're keeping the x and y values the same but we're changing from Fahrenheit to Celsius. And here even though my plots look a bit different the correlation is exactly the same. All we did was change the scale because to get to Celsius, the formula to get from Fahrenheit to Celsius is you take each Fahrenheit value minus 32 degrees and then times by 5 nines. So we subtract the same amount from each value and then we times everything by 5 nines. And because we did the same thing to each x and y value, we didn't actually change the correlation. Once again, we subtracted the multiplied by the same amount to all the New York values, so the correlation didn't change. And then we subtracted and the multiplied by the same amount to all the Boston values, and so our correlation still didn't change. As a note, the correlation will look stronger if your standard deviations are smaller. Just because if your standard deviations are smaller, your points are less spread out, so it looks like they're closer to the line. So both scatter plots below have a correlation of r equals 0.7. But this plot has smaller standard deviation for x and standard deviation for y. So because the standard deviations are smaller, it makes our correlation look like it's stronger, even though it's really not. How do you interpret the correlation? R equals 0.6 does not mean that there's twice as much association as 0.3. R equals 0.6 does not mean that 60% of the points are clustered tightly around the line. R equals 0.6 does not mean that the line goes through 60% of the points. Okay. Keep in mind also that your correlation can be misleading if there's outliers. And R only measures linear association. So a computer will still give you a correlation value for a curved relationship, but it doesn't actually mean anything. So when we say nonlinear, that means that it's a curve. So something like this, or maybe this, those could all be curved relationships. But you should only find correlation if you have a linear relationship. And to see, you should actually draw the scatter diagram to see if you have a line. And we mentioned that correlation is very sensitive to outliers. So let's see why. So watch what happens to the correlation if I add an extra point. So here's our original data with a correlation of 0.8649. Now I'm going to add just one point. If I add this one point out here, just this one little point, notice my correlation dropped to 0.65. Or if I add this one point out here, notice my correlation now looks really bad. It's all the way down to 0.08. And the line that was supposed to go through my data doesn't even go through my data anymore because that outlier affected the line so much.
And so your outliers can very much affect your correlation. And we mentioned that correlation only works if our relationship is linear. So again, computers are very good at plugging and chugging, and the software will always compute the correlation if you ask it to. But that correlation doesn't actually mean anything if your relationship isn't a line. So this is example 68. The scatter plot shows an example that's fairly strong. Notice my points are pretty close to each other, but it follows a curved relationship, so a line's not going to be a good fit. However, when I asked the software for the correlation, it obediently tried to fit a line, so it drew my line in, and it said that R is 0.27. But that correlation of 0.27 doesn't mean anything because the relationship isn't linear, so I shouldn't have found that at all. Next, ecological correlation. So this is something you have to watch out for. So sometimes each point on a plot represents the average or a rate for a whole group of individuals. So one point represents a whole group of people instead of just being one person. So for example, we could find the death rate from cancer versus the rate of cigarette smoking, and we could plot each country on the scatter diagram. Or example 70, we could find the average math and reading test scores for all the fifth high schools in a state and plot each school on the scatter diagram. So this sounds like it would be good because we'd be saving a lot of time. We wouldn't have to plot each individual person. We could just plot the values for each school or each country. But it doesn't work out very well. So the correlation from a plot of averages or rates is called an ecological correlation. And ecological correlations are artificially strong. So that means they're going to be a lot higher than they truly are. So in example 71, so this is a scatter plot of income and education for individuals in three different states. So each individual is marked by a letter showing which state they live in. So all these A people live in state A. Then all the B people live in state B, etc. And when you look at all of the individual people, my correlation may be moderate, it's really not all that strong. But for 72, they only plotted the average for each state. So all the A's went in together to give you this one little A. And then all the B's give you this B and your C. If I was to draw that line, hey, it looks like those points are pretty close to the line and it looks like I have a really high correlation. But that was an inflated correlation. The correlation seems much higher than it truly is. So you should always, or it's always better to look at the individual people. You'll get a better estimate of the correlation. And finally, even though we've talked about this many times, association is not causation. So remember chapter two with our confounding factors and the software that computes the correlation for you doesn't know if there's a confounding factor. So example 16, in a famous data set, a researcher found that countries with large number of storks usually have high birth rates with a correlation of 0.61. So does this mean that storks really deliver babies? Obviously not. And finally, I just have more scatter plots for you to look at. Because remember that the shape of our scatter plot is affected not only by our correlation, but by the standard deviation of x and the standard deviation of y. So for r equals negative 1, this, here's two different data sets that both have a correlation of negative 1. Notice that they do look slightly different. Or here's two different correlations that both have a data or correlation of negative 0.92. And they look different. My correlation negative 0.63, so again, three different data sets. Notice how different they look. R equals negative 0.27, again, very different data sets, but they all have the same correlation. R equals 0, R equals 0.44, R equals 0.87, and at R equals 1, we're back to having points exactly on a line.